Thank you for joining me for this segment of our study where we've been looking at the book of Daniel for further insight into the identity of our Messiah, Yahusha. And in our last segment, we looked at the prophecy of the Son of Man recorded by the prophet Daniel. And we were able to see that this prophecy is actually pointed to again and again in various other scripture writings. And that's all the way to the book of Revelations. And in reviewing these scriptures, uh, found first in the Tanakh or Old Testament, and then again in the writings of the emissaries or apostles in the Renewed Covenant, com uh, commonly called the New Testament, we're then reminded of how growing in our understanding of the Master Plan of the Most High actually reveals greater and greater understanding not only of the big picture, but also a greater understanding of the roles of all of the key characters of the plan, such as giving us a greater understanding of our Messiah. And that's really important because Matayahu or Matthew 24 verse 25 warns us that false messiahs and false prophets shall arise so as to deceive the whole world and if possible even the elect and to be sure we must be loosed from the bondage of churchianity where some religious men and women have found for themselves a business opportunity called church, which is a man-centered business plan with religious overtones, rather than the Messiah-centered master plan of our Heavenly Father. And with the true revelation of the Most High's master plan, comes a fresh revelation of how our Father has actually given to each of us to play a key role in His Master Plan. He has given to each of us to serve in various ways. And to be certain, our own personal restoration is vitally important to the restoration of others. Because, if truth be told, these pictures illustrate the inner thought life of all who have been born into the lineage of the first Adam. Like King David, we were all born in sin and shaped by lawlessness. And that's without exception. And that's no matter how good one looks on the outside because we're holding it down as we operate in the dysfunction of the sin nature. That's why soap operas, reality TV shows, and movies draw so many viewers. The plots are familiar, either reflecting some aspect of our own lives or the lives of others we either know or know of. And while it is certainly true that we are to come to Yahuwah just as He finds us, it is not true that we are to stay in that condition. The plan of our Father is that as a matter of ongoing process, we are restored. Not only that we are restored, but that we be instruments of restoration in the hands of our Father as members 
of the body of our Messiah. Ephesians 1 verses 19 to 23 And what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe? According to the working of His great might, that He worked in Messiah when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all all things to the assembly which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all end of quote and so that means that even now our Heavenly Father has made our Messiah to sit in authority as we who have been bought into his body are restored and learn to walk in our true identity as members of Messiah's body. His arms, his hands, his legs, his feet, exhibiting his character and authority as an ever-increasing weight of esteem or glory is made manifest in our lives to the benefit of the body and as a light to the world. Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 2 Therefore, since we are surrounded surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race set out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Yahusha, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross beam, scorning its shame and set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. End of quote. And so in verse 2 of this passage, we see the phrase, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And with Hebrew eyes of understanding, we see that we're being told that in Messiah, is the beginning, the Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and then the Tav, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And so we see the perfecting or completion of our belief. Indeed, in Messiah, Yahusha is the strength, the Aleph, which is the picture of the ox head of the covenant, the Tav, which is a picture of crossed sticks, the Olive Tav, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we see this phrase um, actually mentioned in other uh, passages as well as the beginning and the end. So we know now, as we look at scripture with Hebrew eyes of understanding, it's the beginning and the ending of the Hebrew alphabet. And how fitting to make reference to the Hebrew alphabet or Aleph bet, um, since we're talking about someone who is known as the Word. Hallelujah. And although mainstream Christianity 
correctly preaches that our Messiah came to change our final destination, saving us from being eternally separated from He who is life, which He did do. Mainstream Christianity then, however, still preaches that we are to come as you are, and it's okay to stay as you are, because nobody's perfect. And you know, this is the, uh, the doctrine that then creates the arrested development of those who have believed in the good news of the kingdom as it pertains to the forgiveness of our sins, but then are misguided as to the sanctification of our souls by the washing of the water of the word. Because what our Father has been revealing to us is that the primary doctrines of mainstream Christianity actually present a stumbling block to the perfecting of the saints. The saints being the called out assembly of the body of Messiah. And it is doctrines such as this which then makes it necessary that we endeavor to rediscover certain truth principles provided for us in Scripture, even rediscovering the truth regarding our Messiah and regarding our salvation. Because as we are coming out of um, the misinformation that we who have a background in Christianity have to come out of, we, we find that it's necessary for us to really test what it is that we believe. And we're all undergoing that process as we come out of uh, those misgivings of, of Christianity. And as we rediscover the plan of our Heavenly Father, we find that it is a plan to bring us into a living relationship with the teaching and instructions of Yah at an intimate heart level. In other words, the spirit of the law, rather than the letter of the law, actually becomes a part of who we are, so that the word is in increasingly made flesh in us. You know, some years ago when our Father led me away from the Sunday ritual of worship and showed me what He actually says to us in His Word about Seventh Day Worship, He revealed to me the spiritual significance of the Shabbat. And um, he revealed to me that the Shabbat is more than a ritual day of rest from all activity. It is instead a reminder of the heart disposition that we are to have in relation to the word of Yahuwah, where even in the activity of our lives, our, our daily walk, we are yet resting in his guidance. And you know, that's because when we are washed in the blood of the Lamb, it's with purpose. It's so that we may then enter into relationship with the living Word of Yah, the Spirit of Torah, Yah's teaching and instruction which is in, in fact the um, literal meaning of the word Torah. It's teaching and instruction. And so it is Yah's teaching and instruction is then made alive in us as the Ruach Kadesh or Holy Spirit actually engages with our spirit. And we see that in Romans 1.9. 
and then as a matter of process by means of interaction which is a, a you know a vital part of of that which is defined as being a relationship there has to be interaction and so by means of interaction with the word of the most high we are changed into the image of Messiah and that from glory to glory or one manifestation to another manifestation and we see that in 2 Corinthians 3.18 and so it is that it is there that we may rest in the still small voice of his word cultivating a spiritual ear in us that hears and obeys his leading uh, of our lives because that still small voice actually speaks of our thought life and so it's in our thought life that he begins to um, speak to us and lead us and and give to us that which we should desire that we may then come into alignment with his word with the desires of his heart for us for therein is um, our place of blessing where he's made provision for us and so um, it is indeed as we learn to be led by the living word of the Most High it is indeed a matter of process and in that um, matter of process of relationship we are strengthened by his character being built in us with each decision to follow and obey the word because we now understand that uh, the teaching and instruction or law of Yah is not done away with even even the sacrifice of the lambs for sin was not done away with it was fulfilled in Messiah Yahushua who once and for all took upon himself our sin since he was sinless and we now understand that the teaching and instruction of our Heavenly Father is for our good for our benefit and not to harm or to hinder us but to guide us in the here and now and in the here and now establishing that disposition of rest now which is later made manifest in that eternal place of rest as members of the body of Messiah hallelujah and amen so may it be now we see before us a genealogy found in Bereshit or Genesis chapter 5 and this genealogy is going to provide for us some further insight or an understanding of the title son of man that we've been looking at in Daniel chapter 7 and um, what we have here in front of us is a summary of the meanings of the names in in the genealogy of Adam to Noah uh, recorded in Genesis chapter 5 and I I first saw this uh, this genealogy with uh, the name meanings several years ago as some of you may have also already seen this uh, amazing uh, chart and um, I first saw Chuck Missler uh, deliver a message with this chart and I was truly truly amazed and, and I just want to take a moment to praise Yah for the ministry 
of the word through our dear brother Chuck Missler, who not so very long ago went home to be with Yah. And so um, we thank you, Yah, for the treasury um, of insight that you have um, indeed left for us uh, through the ministry of the Ruah that was at work in and through Chuck Missler. Now, what we must note here is that Seth um, was not Adam's first child. Cain was. And it is thought that the, the child born after Cain, whose name was Abel, was actually Cain's twin. And we see the details of Cain and Abel's birth in uh, Barashid or Genesis 4 verses 1 to 2. But as we can see here, neither Cain nor Abel's names are included in this genealogy. But we will talk a, a little bit more about that in just a moment. But what we want to look at here is that this is the righteous lineage through which our Messiah, Yahusha, was born. And we can see that in the genealogy in Luke chapter 3. Um, secondly, we want to see something that, again, is quite amazing. Uh, we see that the names, when placed in order of birth, actually makes a sentence. And it's not just a random sentence, which, even if that were the case, that in and of itself would be amazing. But rather, it is one, um, it, this is a situation where this chart or this genealogy actually speaks specifically of the master plan of salvation in a very succinct sentence. So let's read uh, these name meanings together. Starting uh, with Adam, whose name means man. Seth, whose name means appointed. Anosh, whose name means mortal. Canaan, whose name means sorrow. Mahalalel, meaning the blessed Elohim. Yared, meaning shall come down. Enoch, Hanak, meaning teaching. Methuselah, whose name means his death shall bring. Lamech, meaning the despairing. And Noah, whose name means rest or comfort. So when we put the meanings of each of those names together and read them uh, in sequential order, man appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed Elohim shall come down teaching. His death shall bring the despairing rest. Or comfort. Wow! We know, of course, that only the Most High could have orchestrated the naming of people and then hide this, this message of the meanings of the name so that they could be found. And remember, these are the names of people who were each born hundreds of years apart. Now, as we study this chart, we see that there are actually two names which mean man. 
One is Adam and the other is Anosh. Now, of course, that's not anything unusual because, for example, in English, there are several words used to identify a female. For example, lady, woman, girl. Each word emphasizes a certain trait. And that's what we see here as well. In the case of this genealogy, the name Adam means man. And this uh, name Adam, man, is used when referring to all of mankind as a creation. On the other hand, the name Anosh emphasizes the mortality of mankind because remember at creation Adam or mankind was not created to die. Death was a result of the fall of mankind. And so again, Enosh emphasizes the mortality of man. And so now let's see what that all has to do with the prophecy in Daniel 7 concerning the Son of Man. Well, when we look at Daniel 7 verse 13 and the Scriptures 2009 version, which, by the way, is available as a free download in the eSword Bible app. What we see then is that the title, Son of Man, is literally Son of Enosh in this verse. And let's just make um, or keep note of the fact that this prophecy in Daniel is recorded in Aramaic. But even still, the distinction is the same. Be again, Enosh means man. However, Enosh emphasizes the mortality of man, which is slightly different in meaning from the son of Adam, because again, the son of Adam makes general reference to all of mankind as a creation. And the bottom line is that that's exactly what we just saw on the genealogy in, in Bereshit or, or Genesis chapter 5. And so it is that the mortality of mankind that is being emphasized in the title Son of Man in the Daniel 7 prophecy because the son of Enosh, or mortal man, came to restore mortal man to eternal life. Hallelujah. Now, very briefly, we want to talk about the absence of Cain and Abel in the genealogy of, of uh, Bereshit or Genesis chapter 5 because it is something that we're going to be able to see in an upcoming verse about the Son of Man in the Renewed Covenant. And so we're going to see that in our next segment. And so even though Cain was the first child born to Adam and Eve, Cain was disqualified from being listed as the firstborn. And let's also remind ourselves that that term firstborn is a title. It's a title given to those chosen to serve the Most High as having received the blessing and the inheritance to, uh, to the benefit of the entire fam family. Now, Cain was disqualified because he 
he murdered his brother, Abel, due to his jealousy and hatred of his brother, Abel, who the Most High deemed as righteous in his manner of worship. But rather than turning from his wicked ways, Cain hated his brother Abel, and that's because Cain thought himself to be entitled to worship the Most High as he saw fit, which sounds a lot like the sin of his mother and father, Adam and Eve. And um, we see this same self-willed worship in the Pharisees and, and the other religious elite who advocated for Messiah Yahushua to be executed. And in our next segment, we will look at a verse where that's exactly what we see happening, which again is further evidence of the absolute need for our Messiah, Yahusha, to be born of the dual nature. According to the flesh, 100% man, although without sin, so as to be able to pay the penalty for our sin. And according to the Spirit, 100% the word of Yahuwah in the flesh so that our Father could pour out His Spirit through Messiah Yahusha unto us, and thereby making us whole and complete. Indeed, His renewed creation, equipped for the millennial reign of Messiah Yahusha, because we have learned and continue to learn obedience to the reign of the word of the King, even now. Hallelujah. And so may it be. And so it is that we say all praises to the Most High Yah, who had a plan before for the foundations of the world, so as to be able to rescue and restore his creation. Our Father's name is Yahuwah, and his name is actually a verb which shows action. The meaning of his name, the one who is or he is. Now, the word Yasha is also a verb which means to be liberated, to be saved, to be delivered. And when we put, put these two names together uh, and they're combined, they become the name of our Messiah, Yahusha, which means Yahuwah saves or Yahuwah is salvation, which then bears witness to another name for our Messiah, which is the name Emmanuel, which means Elohim with us, because it was indeed Yahuwah with us in Messiah Yahusha. Hallelujah. What great love he has for us. Hallelujah. Hen, Ushulam Mishpaka, Favor and Peace Family. Please join me in our next segment of study. And if you're being blessed by our series of studies, Please share and subscribe to the channel so that others may be able to find the channel and uh, as well share in our studies together. Blessings to you.